Hello ladies. So I just wanted to make a little video sort of explaining a little bit more about why I really believe this practice of meditation and quiet listening is so central to your journey of healing and to entering a deeper place of rest with the Lord. So really for many of us, I think we could say, you know, especially as cradle Catholics, we've been taught how to pray. You know, we know our prayers, we can say the rosary, we the Hail Mary, the Our Father, the St. Michael prayer, we go to Mass, and all these beautiful, beautiful devotions that we have as Catholics. But for so many of us, this kind of regular practice of quieting our minds, of listening for the Lord, of focusing our attention on Him, on His Word, might be something that we haven't really done too much. And so this is so important because we need to practice taking charge of our minds and choosing where we're going to focus. And meditation is the most powerful way to do that. You're intentionally choosing to focus your mind for however period of time you can on truth, on truth itself, on the Lord, on whether it's his word or whether it's a picture from a gospel passage or maybe even an image. People might meditate through an image. It's a powerful form of meditation through a, a sacred image. Um, so, so many ways that call your attention to what is above. In our world, we are so full and so bombarded with distractions constantly constantly vying for our attention that we have to really be intentional about quiet and about focusing our attention in the right place. Because if we go on autopilot all day, it's, it's not going to go well because the competition that's out there, the things that are competing for our attention are generally not very positive. Um, and so this is a time for you to choose that and to practice that. And so often I think we think, oh, you know, I'm not good at meditation. I'm just, that's just not me. But I will tell you, if you worry, you are an expert meditator. You are essentially focusing your attention, ruminating, tossing over and over in your mind a negative thing, envisioning it, imagining it, imagining what it would feel like, imagining what could happen, how you would deal with it, all of these things that you do with a negative through worry is essentially the opposite, but like say on different ends of the spectrum of what holy meditation is. You are turning over in your mind goodness, truth, beauty. You are imagining how you would respond, how you would act and live it out in your life. And this is transformative for in a positive way if you choose it and if you practice it. But it doesn't come naturally. And I just want you to know that that that's okay. The discomfort you might experience as you practice meditating for the first time is not a problem. It's just like anything in life. The first time you do it, it's not going to be comfortable. And that's completely fine that you don't beat yourself up about it, that you just recognize the discomfort is honestly a sign that you are in the right place. In the same way that if you go to the gym for the first time in a long time and it is super uncomfortable to be on that treadmill or doing whatever exercise it is, you don't and if you're in a good place with it, ideally, in truth, right, think that that's a sign that you shouldn't be there. It's a sign that I am exactly where I need to be because I don't want to be uncomfortable with walking a mile on the treadmill. I want to be in a better place, so I need to practice. I need to stay at it. And the discomfort the day after the gym is a sign that you did something. The discomfort is a sign of growth. And so I want you to know as you choose to sit in this discomfort, to practice focusing your mind that you are doing exactly the right thing, that you want to grow those neural pathways that focus on peace, that focus on truth and goodness and beauty, and stop engaging in those negative neural pathways that are focused in worry and fear of the future and regret over the past and that choosing to fix your mind on the word of God and on his truth and on his love for you is so transformative. So I encourage you in this so much. And I want to also talk a little bit about why this is so powerful from a neurobiological perspective as well. Because a lot of people kind of naturally gravitate towards whatever their comfort zone is. And generally, most people will either feel more comfortable in sort of a let's say, imaginative kind of emotional, um, we say a right brain situation, whereas other people are much more comfortable. Let's, let's talk about the logic behind this. Let's reason. Let's, um, let's uh, to think on this and, and, and really looking at the, the logical left side of the brain. And these two sides, the emotions and the imagination, and then on the right side and the left side that's more focused on the logic and putting things together in a cohesive manner, these sides of the brain are meant to be integrated. And while it's maybe comfortable to live our lives on one end or the other, it's so important that we learn to integrate the two. And so this is why a big part that I'm encouraging you to do in, in this 25-day uh, 
Advent challenge, I really want to encourage you to be not just practicing the meditation, which is looking at the right side, but also journaling, really writing out the truths, writing out whatever it is the Lord is speaking to your heart, whatever you're sensing, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're even thinking about through all this, to write it down, to write the truth out so you're able to be using both hemispheres of your brain and really bringing them together as you're growing. So I just want to encourage you that there's good science behind all of this. This is good for your brain, your body, and your spirit come together. They work together so beautifully. But sometimes we have to be kind of intentional in these things and really step into new territories and embrace them, embrace the discomfort. So I just want to let you know I'm walking with you. I'm cheering you on. I'm here. If you have any questions, please um, reach out in our Facebook group. I'm going to be there supporting you and cheering you on the whole time. So Thank you for checking this out. Thank you for journeying with me. And I'm just excited to continue this journey through all of that event with you.